Hey there guys and welcome to another Factorio Reddit Weekly. I'm Exterminator and thank you so much for joining me. And uh, we are back. Unfortunately, I already recorded this once and uh, my OBS, so my OBS like didn't update and apparently it decided that the screen capture uh, was on a different screen. Um, so it didn't work. I'm redoing it again. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, in the Czech National Library of Technology, patrons can play Factorio for free, which is super cool. Um, I absolutely would have loved to have had this, like, when I was younger, or a kid, or, I mean, even if you're not younger, um, like, if you can't play Factorio, uh, you know, on your own computer, or, or you don't have a computer or something, this is fantastic, it's super cool. The Pentagonal City Blocks that no one asked for. I'm <laughs> sad I have to look at this again. <laughs> I don't mean to be critical, but like, I definitely want nothing to do with this. The squiggly lines are driving me nuts. Uh, okay, that's it. Dino Factory time. Gross. Earlier this week, I released a new mod, Factory Search. So I spotlighted this. Um, fantastic mod. Absolutely check it out. And check out my spotlight if you haven't. Um, really, really good mod to like find where stuff is made and stored in your factory. Love how you can use ghosts to do this kind of stuff. Yeah, so this is really cool. I don't usually do this just because I forget that it's a thing, um, but it can be really handy in some situations. Uh, this, this person points out, your ghost will despawn in a few million years, though, if I remember correctly, a very long uh, but still temporary solution. Well, if you end up playing your factory long enough for that to be an issue, I think you have bigger problems than that. Trains are the most eco-friendly means of transportation, so I use them to burn excess gas. I mean, I guess. Hmm. But yeah, having a surrogate system that disables heavy cracking while lube is low is a lot more, is a better way to do that probably. But that's interesting for sure. I proudly present my Factorio tattoo. Man, this is awesome. The factory must grow. <laughs> super, super cool. I don't have any tattoos, but this is tempting. Is that pollution? Encourage pollution. Tattoo must grow. Would be a shame if that devs decide to change furnace turret asset. <laughs> oh man, that would that'd be kind of infuriating. Would be a legacy tattoo though, as that person said. So a fun fact is that some menu backgrounds have things hidden behind them. Which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so the menu is obviously just like on top of this background, but what a lot of people don't know is that you can move the menus around, which is really helpful. Um, and you might find some things hide behind it. Just <laughs> considering it's a spider terrifies me, terrifies me a little bit, but um, still pretty neat. What is this? How long are islands apart? Oh, yeah, so this is a kind of sad post. Um, not sad like... Um, it's just sad, like actually makes me feel bad for them because, uh, apparently island mode, uh, they chose island mode and they did not know that it has a singular island. Um, so th this is the only land they're going to find. Now, of course they could landfill and make more land to then build on. Um, so the run's not totally wasted. Of course they use all their stone and then, then they have a problem. Uh, fractal base book update red circuits. So this is super cool. There's a lot of posts on uh, this week's, like in regards to this. I wanna watch this one mostly in its entirety because it is super satisfying. Oh, this is so glorious. You know what this reminds me of? Uh, back in the early 2000s, well, I remember in the early 2000s, Screensaver itself is probably from like the 90s or something. Um, do you guys remember the screensaver that had like the colored pipes that would go around and like bounce off the edges of your monitor? That's what this reminds me of when it started. Um, it it kind of dates me for anyone younger who's here, but if anyone does remember that <laughs> and knows what I'm talking about, that's what this reminded me of. Uh, this is just absolutely fantastic though. I love this so much. And this is just for red circuits, by the way. Like that nuts. I'm gonna go change my pants now. <laughs> no expensive, there's only need more input for raw materials. Yes. Um, so this is the same thing, XY symmetry. Just 
love it so much. So water still protect you from enemies. It's interesting to build the base here. Uh, yeah, so it does uh, for now. I don't know. Maybe we'll get something expansion. Uh, but is this person says while enemies don't cross water, pollution does. So basically, they will still try to attack you, um, and they'll just try to find a path, which likely means they would come through this factory to do so, and maybe cross the bridge, depending how wide you make it. By the way, that factory is probably in trouble unless you move it. Why is my pump not pumping? Uh, my guess is it's not lined up. Um, so it can be a little tricky. Basically, you, you need to pull a train up to the station and stop the train. And then uh, when you hover over the fluid tanker with the pump, there will be like three yellow boxes over it that you, you need to line the pump up with one of them. Also, this person adds a very good tip that your pumps will pump faster if they're directly pumping from the storage tank rather than a pipe. It's very true. Coal liquefaction into solid fuel makes upgraded burnable fuel, and it produces more solid fuel than it consumes coal. Yeah, so coal liquefaction can be really good. Of course, you do need... Well, they say, uh, I feel as if coal liquefaction should be researchable without oil, so that mass without oil wells would be playable, which is a very good idea. It currently does require heavy oil to get started, but then this person has a brilliant idea. Maybe you should be able to boil 10 fish down to one oil. I love that idea. <laughs> I think that's hilarious and a decent use for fish. Uh, so another factory module, plastic, just, man, this is so good to look at. This is actually sort of viable, lots of trunk space. Yeah, so this person says some people make entire factories based on moving cars. Although I haven't, I don't remember if the inserters can grab from it when the car is moving. I'm not sure if that's possible. I mean, I know there's factories that have moving cars, but I don't know if they stop to be grabbed from or they can be grabbed from when moving. I don't remember. Is there anything wrong with the science design? I use it heaps and I never see it being used on any posts. So I was wondering if there was any flaws. So initially when I looked at this in my first recording, I thought that there was because at first glance for me, it looked like they were just passing the packs like back and forth like we see sometimes where they pass them up and then like back down through the same labs. Um, but this is actually really smart because what's happening is it's like a zigzag to different labs. So this is essentially equivalent to just passing like one to the next one upwards or whatever, but they're being, I think, more space conservative by doing it diagonally, maybe. Not sure if it actually is, but still really cool design. Got the game yesterday. This is my first big factory, currently only smelting ore. Iron ore. Uh, wanted to ask if there are any problems with this design. Uh, I mean, it's like inserter excessive kind of and bigger than it needs to be, but there's certainly nothing wrong with it. Like, it's going to work totally fine. Although, I think someone else mentioned, yeah, <laughs> building on the ores is unfortunate. And you're going to run into some problems later on when you need that ore. The Pinta, Pintomino city blocks that no one asked for. Ugh, this is driving me nuts. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if we venture too far in our pursuit of factory must grow. In this case, yes. Factorio and chill will never be a thing. Just bought a bottle of wine for our Friday night session. I know full well it's going to get to 4 a.m. before I have to say we need to sleep now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Not sure uh, when it would arise during an all night versus Factorio. Maybe when the factory finally starts producing lube or when the rockets launch. Yeah, when the rockets launch. That's when it happens. Fuel economy and trains part two, the exciting conclusion. So, I mean, this seems pretty intuitive to me uh, that the conclusion is that rocket fuel is better. Although maybe they want to test this because rocket fuel takes solid fuel. So they want to know if like solid fuel or the equivalent in rocket fuel is better, uh, but rocket fuel is better, not too surprisingly. Uh, my friend is new to trains and I helped him make this. I only did the signaling. How bad did we do? Blueprint in the comments. So I already looked at this in the previous recording. Uh, basically, uh, the main issue I see is that they need more chains. Like, they need to replace all the normal signals inside of this junction with chain signals. Um, they need chain signals before every crossing in here. And they kind of have it sometimes, but only like halfway through. So, otherwise they're going to have some some pretty 
serious train problems. Fractal base book. Engines module when you need a whole buttload of engines. So this is the same type of fractal thing. Gonna watch part of it. Oh man, this looks so good. Super satisfying. Oh. I want a whole base like this. Which it looks like they're in the process of doing. The bot bus. So this is really interesting. Uh, they've basically, well, they made a bus out of bots um, using like pass through bridges. Uh, this is super cool to like watch, uh, but it's very performance inefficient. It's very bad for performance and definitely has some throughput limits. But like, check this out. Super satisfying, like really satisfying to watch, but uh, they list it in the cons here. Uh, so the cons is throughput limited, performance heavy, unnecessarily complicated. The pros is there's a lot of zippy little bots flying around. <laughs> basically, basically yeah, how I feel about it. Made my own bot hub for future expansion. This is nice. It, it, it's very reminiscent of bot hubs I, I would build in a lot of my older factories. Not that not this like is not good, <laughs> even though my older factories weren't good. This is, I just don't build a lot of bot hubs anymore, uh, just because I'm usually too lazy to upgrade my initial one, but this is pretty nice. My mind keeps insisting on reading the title as it made my own hot tub. <laughs> okay. 200 hours and four different saves my first rocket launch. This is really exciting. Big congrats. Oh, the spider dancing. Woohoo! I like the lights around the rocket too. Nice. I know how mind-bending the process is getting to this point. Congrats. Yes, I echo that. Another fractal base book. They use prod modules. Oh, this is so glorious. I love this so much. Please come make my base, uh, Naomi. Tension spacing details like that just makes the in entire thing have vis uh, be visually pleasing. Um, I wonder how long it took them to make this. It seems super, like, really time intensive. Space exploration. Thanks to significantly ramping up my nuclear power production, I was finally able to completely fend off a uh, coronal mass ejection event for the first time. I, something new since I played. So happy that I don't have to worry about death rays from outer space. Death rays? Holy moly. I am glad that I'm not trying to play this now. That sounds terrifying. Uh, but I think that's going to do it, guys. Sorry, I kind of rushed through this. I just already spent time doing a whole video, and now I'm a little limited on time, unfortunately. Uh, but OBS should be fixed for next time. Um, I do want to add that uh, we, we are slowly approaching the 200 mark, although I think uh, if time allows for me to do base tours soon, I think I will, maybe before episode 200, cut these down to like two per month is what I'm thinking, and maybe one or two base tours a month. Again, depends on how much time I have. Uh, but I really appreciate your feedback when I asked for it in, I think, last episode, which was not last week, because I missed last week's, unfortunately, but the week before, um, you you guys seem to be very excited about base, base tours, which is good and understandable. Uh, and then it seemed generally people didn't want this to completely go away, but maybe reduced down to like every other week or something. Uh, and then a base tour uh, in place of it at least once a month, maybe twice. So... That's kind of the plan moving forward. I don't know exactly when I'll implement that. I'm really itching to do base tours. I've just been super swamped lately, but uh, I am looking forward to it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, a like is appreciated. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're not subscribed, feel free to. And turn on the bell notification to keep up with all future content. If you have any thoughts, questions, leave them below. Until next time, I look forward to seeing you all. And do take care.